Good morning, YouTubers. Reloading Bench back with you on this beautiful weekend morning. And it is going to be a gorgeous day. Going to be a little bit of a hottie out there. I think it's going to be close to 90 today. So uh, we'll be hearing the air conditioning units kicking in. I was originally just going to make this video on one product, primers. And then I thought, well, a whole bunch came in and I went shopping and I had some ideas and I thought I'd kind of cram them all into one video and uh, maybe it'll result in a second video based on where I'm going with this particular product. So let me start with uh, yesterday was a was a graduation that we attended. So after the graduation, I ran some errands and did a little shopping out of town to a store I don't normally get to and that would be Sportsman's Warehouse. And uh, it was nice to see they had powders. So they now have powders on the shelf. What was not nice to see were the prices, you know, 35 to 50 bucks for a pound of powder, but you're not paying hazmat and you're not paying shipping. So uh, potentially that could even things out. But the fact that powder was on the shelf was wonderful to see. And what was even better to see was there were primers uh, that were sitting in the what I would call a uh, primer area. The bummer is you can only buy two sleeves, or as some people would say online, boxes. I don't call this a box, I call this a sleeve. A box to me is a brick of a thousand. So uh, as you can see, the price was $5.71, which is better because that equates to roughly six cents a primer. Still ridiculously high, probably double what it should be, but it's a lot better than 10 cents or higher. Uh, and speaking of primers, I'm seeing primers online now uh, Powder Valley, I think, is a prime example. $79 for 1,000 Winchester, uh, $89 for CCI, which uh, is very positive in the, in, for, two cent, for, for two reasons, in the sense that uh, supply is coming back, uh, not high enough uh, or not saturated enough to drop the price down. I think, I think the new norm, once things settle, and who knows, is that a year away? Is that six months away? Is that two years from now? Who knows? I think the new norm is going to be probably fifty dollars for a thousand primers, um, maybe maybe forty five. I, I don't think we'll see forty. So uh, I know primers were you know getting at the three cents again when you factor in all the either local gun shop slash hobby shop higher prices, hobby shop being reloading, uh, or online when you factor in. Uh, shipping and handling uh, as well as hazmat so uh, it was nice to see uh five dollars and 71 cents limit was two uh i can remember a year ago i think at sportsman's i think the limit was one a day so uh we're getting better but we're not quite there i don't ever recall using Reming remington small pistol so i'll give them a shot uh, and see what's up so while i was at sportsman's warehouse i saw this and i thought okay uh, this is in, uh, I think I opened it to take a peek at it, uh, and then messed up the label. Um, but this is in 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor. I do not have a, a overall length uh, cartridge gauge, case gauge, for chamber gauge, uh, for 6 millimeter, uh, excuse me, 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor. Um, my first thought was, oh, it's brass, uh, but it's not brass. Uh, if I was buying new case gauges, and this is why I keep desiccant in with my case gauges, I don't care how much I oil these things, you will see, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but they will they will begin to rust. I, again, I don't care how much I oil, how many desiccant packs are in here to to uh to deal with moisture it just doesn't matter i think they help but they don't prevent so if i was going to buy a, a, a case gauge today uh, i've never had uh, titanium nitride which is what this is coated in so you've got uh, it looks like a bluing on the inside as opposed to you know just bare steel bare steel um, and then you've got uh, a titanium nitride coating on the outside. Uh, so I've never had this type of uh, case gauge, so I thought I'd give it a try. It was reasonably priced, same price 
uh, at Sportsman's Warehouse as it was online, which I think is cool because I think Sportsman's Warehouse and a lot of other uh, places are finally waking up to the fact that uh, um, people are going to shop for low cost. So, you know, if you carry it in the store and you're not uh, reasonable in your pricing, people are just going to go online. So this was the exact same price, uh, say, on the Rainforest or Midway. So I decided, all right, I'll pick it up. Give it a try. See how uh, see how it functions. So if I was to buy, and again, not knowing how this operates, thinking it was brass, uh, operates, meaning how it stands up over time. Uh, I know how it operates. You drop the, the case in there. Uh, I would only buy brass. I would pay the extra money. I think Ellie Wilson is now doing a line of brass. I would pay the premium for brass to eliminate the concern for the rusting factor that is going to happen over time. It's, it's just going to happen. I don't care how, how diligent you are with your prevention. It's, it's going to happen. Uh, it's just, it's just that simple. So, uh, I was also thinking of trying something different because as you can see, I use old Lee cases, uh, to, to stack stuff in, uh, on my bench shelves. I was also thinking of a new idea that, you know, every time I have to break out a particular case gauge, I, I, I go and I look for it. And I have three or four of these that I find my case gauges in. Maybe it makes sense. Uh, and this is 223. Uh, I don't know where my... Actually, you know what I do? Since this is 6.5 Creedmoor, half a dozen of one, six of another. This is 223. So we'll do it with this. Uh, I would do the same thing with the Creedmoor. So, actually, no, this is not 223. This is, I think this is 223. Yeah, here's my 223. So, my thought was, do a little combining. Does it make sense to keep the case gauge with the actual die set? So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. I don't think there's room enough underneath. And again, depending on the size of the case gauge, this may not work. So this idea may only be valid for some case gauges. But it frees up room in other areas for potentially dumping uh, a case gauge that won't fit. So uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. We'll see how it works. So that's that. All right, we're done with primers. We're done with case gauge. Uh, they had Hoppy's oil for same prices on not online. I picked one up because I love using my little, uh, and I've lost the red rubber top here, but I love using this particular, uh, dispenser for, uh, tight to reach places because this big old thing just doesn't do it. Even though it's a tiny hole, um, too much gets out. This is a more accurate and precise, uh, method for me and my uses, I guess. So that was another pickup. Um, and then I think that's, that's all for the, is that everything for sportsman's? Yeah, it wasn't a big sportsman's day uh, in terms of expense or uh, items, but just a couple of things. And then I, when I came home, this was waiting for me. So I had ordered this a while back. Uh, I think I have a couple videos out there on uh, chambering issues with 223 that met all of the spec for uh, Sammy spec in terms of case gauge, you know, fits in the case gauge, the uh, brass length, the overall length, the primer, the powder, the powder, the bullet, no issues, but yet still difficult to chamber in certain rifles. And we went out shooting uh, a, a while back, and that's what kind of initiated this, was uh, I was, I had two different uh, rifles. One was a Ruger number one. For those of you familiar with that particular um, uh, bolt, at, or excuse me, um, drop, uh, gosh, it's escaping me what it's called now um, in terms of uh, how the case and uh, um, the equivalent of the bolt are set. I want to say rolling slash dropping bolt. But in any case, somebody will probably correct me and tell me that I'm an idiot and don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, the Ruger number one, these fed perfectly, no issue whatsoever. The bolt action Remington 700, some of these were tight, like tight as in almost couldn't get the bolt to close. 
So the fact that they meet spec and certain rifles are having more challenges, and more specifically from memory, the Henry lever action, I decided to pick up from RCBS a small base sizer, which actually sizes the base smaller than Sammy spec. So we are going to take this die and set it up. I saw these at uh, Sportsman's uh, Warehouse again as well. This was from my iron press pur purchase, my pickup, my iron press. And if you recall, it had uh, two of these. Uh, it was a three pack. One of them was used for the powder measure or I used one of them for the powder measure, and then I used one for 9mm, and I'm going to use this remaining bushing for this 223 small base and try these out, In uh, and that's what may or may not make a second video. So uh, the next video, if there is one, will be me setting this up in the iron press uh, with the last bushing from the iron press brush. And the, the, the bushings that were at Sportsman's Warehouse now are a two pack for $17, not a three pack. So I don't know if three pack is still a thing or two pack is the new three pack because of shrinkflation, who knows. But in any case, uh, I'm gonna give this a try. And uh, this is a steel uh, die uh, that was purchased, excuse me, produced in late 2022. So relatively new. Um, and that's kind of cool. So. Uh, I said, uh, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, especially on the uh, green machines, RCVS used to stamp the year on the top of the die, and it looks like now you've got the identification RCBS 223 Remington, and then SB small base, and then it has 22. So that 22 corresponds with the year that it was produced. So they're still marking their dies, they're just marking them in different places apparently. So. Uh, that's that. And that's about it for now until I set this up and uh, have uh, have this uh, working for the uh, 223 for small base resizing, which then means I would bust out my Hornady case prep center to trim, chamfer, and deburr to get them down to uh, the exact size that I need. And maybe I'll show that as well because... Um, I have, I can put this to, to good use, uh, so 223 Remington, so I can use this as my gauge for setting up the correct height and pilot for the Hornady Case Prep Center. Alright, that's it for now. Later, more to come.